Good evening, everybody. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this Wednesday night Kingdom Worship Center Bible Study Online. So glad you joined me tonight. I hope you enjoy this amazing song. These are the days of Elijah. This is Donnie McClurkin singing. I know it's going to bless you. And I believe we are living in the days of Elijah. Amen. So enjoy the song as we wait for people to come on tonight, everybody. And uh, we got a great Bible study for you tonight on about the rapture of the glorious church. Amen. So enjoy the song. Good evening, everybody. God bless you for coming on. Thank you for sharing already. Enjoy this beautiful song. These are the days of Elijah by Donnie McClurkin. Hello, everybody. Let's go. And these are the days of Ezekiel. All the dry bones we come in as flesh. God bless you, everybody. And these are the days of the servant David. Rebuilding the temple of praise. Maybe you'll put some praise up on the screen tonight. Some hearts, thumbs up, some hands. Giving Jesus all of the praise. Because he's coming soon. And we are the laborers that are in his vineyard. Declaring the word of the Lord. Say, everybody sing. Shining on the cloud. Shining on the sun. The trumpet's coming. The trumpet's coming. The trumpet's coming. This is the year of Julie. He's coming soon. All the fields are right through at the world. Still we are the laborers that are in the hands of you. Declaring the word. more seconds everybody we're going to start the bible study please share it let's get it out it's going to be a great teaching tonight the more people that can hear this it's going to be important now if you believe that jesus christ is coming back let me come on if you believe that jesus is coming back i do All right. There's no God like Jehovah. Maybe you'll put that up on the screen tonight as we wait just another couple of seconds. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God Well, we could listen to that all night. It's just an amazing song. It's just so anointed, that song. But I got to get to the Bible study tonight. Uh, every time I listen to that song, especially when Donnie McClurkin's singing it, I, I enjoy it so much. So, hello, everybody. God bless you. Welcome to this Wednesday night. Uh, Bible study. So glad that you joined me. I hope your weeks are all going well and you're blessed and you're experiencing uh, so much of God's goodness in your life this week and increase in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I just want to start it off again just by thanking everybody for your love and your support over the last couple of weeks. Thank you once again, everybody, for your love and support of our family, the Marshall family. Uh, we deeply appreciate it. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you as uh, we are in a transition as a family, as you know, with Dad going on in, into glory and into heaven, where we're going to be very soon, I believe, uh, and it could be this year, really could be this year. So thank you, everybody. Really heartfelt uh, love towards you all. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, let's get into the Word of God. I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 5. As I said, I'm going to be teaching tonight on the rapture of the glorious church. And I wanted to emphasize the rapture of the glorious church. Amen. I think, Blair, you're asking what song the... Uh, you know, these are the days of Elijah, that song, these are the days of Elijah by Donnie McClurkin, and it's on YouTube, so you can pick it up there. Uh, but uh, family, I, I wanted to emphasize that glorious church, and I really was hoping that more would be on tonight, but I'm sure many people will watch this recording. Uh, we really have to emphasize that the Lord is going to rapture the glorious church, uh, because there are going to be many people that go to church, and many churches uh, that call themselves churches are going to be left behind. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and this is something that the Holy Spirit has been pressing on my heart every single morning. I, I, I just awaken uh, praying in the Holy Spirit and praying about uh, my own personal dedication, sacrifice, and commitment to the Lord and the things of God. I pray about my family's personal dedication, commitment, and sacrifice to the things of God, as well as the church, Kingdom Worship Center, and all of our partners, but also as the church as a whole. We have to understand something. Jesus is coming back for the glorious church, which truly is the people of God. And, uh, and we know it. We can see it. It's happening. More and more people are talking about it. I actually heard uh, Joe Rogan, who is a talk show host, and others, other talk show hosts, as well as other political pundits that are independent, talking about the Great Tribulation and the rapture of the church and everything that's going on and how this is beginning to bring be just like the, the Bible uh, said it would. And it is, because the Bible is right. The Bible is the inspired, infallible, supernatural word of God. And so we can see that we are living in the last days. Now, here's something I, I want to say to you, uh, and, uh, and, and we've been saying this for many years now, and we were called conspiracy theorists, we were called uh, by, you know, tinfoil hat wearing people. We were attacked by local churches in Hamilton, and people thought we were out to lunch, and that we were not biblical, and that we were... You know, we were we were crazy and radicals, but we had the message of the Holy Spirit warning the people of what was going on. And one of the things we said, uh, if you remember when we were teaching on it, we told people that COVID-19 was going to disappear for a season and then it was going to come back hard again because that was the plan uh, to give the world a little bit of a break, to make the people feel that freedom is returning, but there was no intention to fully return it because they were going to bring it all back. If you remember, we were teaching on that before it ever happened, and here it is now beginning to happen. Uh, and uh, and it's all a part of this globalist agenda, which I'll get into a little bit tonight, but not much. I will bring that into our teachings when we begin in October on the, on the teachings of the end times on Sunday morning, which you don't want to miss at church. Uh, but we did tell people it was coming back, and we did tell people it's a purpose to collapse the economy in order to implement this new digital currency, the CDC, and to bring about this global governance. And, uh, and it's coming back uh, in the States right now. Their schools shutting down. They're masking kids again. They're talking about restrictions, uh, you know, uh, on airlines and travel and all that stuff again. And, you know, Joe Biden just came out, President Joe Biden just came out and said he wants to get a vaccine out by the September 15th, 16th, and he wants to make it so everyone has to take it. So it's all coming back, family. We told you it would. It's part of the globalist agenda. Uh, but I don't want you to be focused on 
the coming of COVID again. I want you to be focused first and foremost and make it your priority to be focused on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's more important than being first focused on COVID-19 and all of this restriction stuff. It's important to warn people, but that got your your absolute focus uh, is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because that will lead you to a greater sacrificial righteous walk with the Lord more than political thought more than political commentary the the idea of the coming of the Lord and focusing on that is going to help you become more passionate more dedicated dedicated and more commitment committed to your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ okay so let's be really focused on this is the time of the Lord's coming uh but you know again yes here we go again and i i've read something a good friend of mine put on the internet and i'm in total agreement with him on this rick pearson is a great bible scholar and great bible teacher but i was, i've been saying this also and that is this family the antichrist kingdom is not coming it's already here the beast's kingdom of the book of revelation is already here it's being set up and uh, right before our very eyes there's two things that are going to be rolled out in the future in this and that is um, and that is the implementation of it and the enforcement of that of that political global governance or the beast kingdom as well as the revealing of the Antichrist himself the world will see that that will begin uh, to be rolled out in the future and the great tribulation is coming to this world and any pastor who doesn't believe that i tell you i'd run from those preachers right now because we see right now people are starting to pay with the scanning of their hand which the bible says we see that their humans are hackable beings and they're going to put chips in human beings and in their brains, which the Bible says in their head, there's going to be a mark. Uh, you know, AI is taking over the world. They're talking about uh, smart cities and, and, and they're talking about restriction in people's mobility and movement and absolute control and this new digital currency where people won't be able to buy or sell, and the government will be able to go right into their bank accounts and take it. I mean, we are living in that time, family, and we are watching the escalation of Satanism all over the world and Satanic things, and it's out there. And uh, and the Bible says it's going to be the worship of the uh, of the dragon which is satan in the last days so we are living in the last days and and the antichrist kingdom is not coming it's already here being set up before our very eyes and again those two things just need to happen and to be implemented which enforced and all of this return of these restrictions it, it, that's what it is this idea that jill biden got covid and all oprah winfrey got covid and and now it's really taken root. It's all a it's all a charade family, in order to in order to deceive people and put the spirit of fear in them again. So it's here, it's here, and the Lord is coming. And uh, and I, I just want to say this from my heart for those who watch this, I wherever you watch this this teaching from tonight. I want to make sure that you really you really find yourself a really great pastor. Not a church that has a lot of excitement in it. You know, first, a really good Bible teaching pastor who's going to teach you exactly what is relevant concerning today and what the Bible says about it and really is willing to be sacrificial for your life and willing to lay down their life for the flock. And I tell you what, if in the last outbreak when when pastors were taken off and running, that is an indication that uh, you've got to pay attention to what that pastor's doing since then, okay? Uh because a lot of churches 
a lot of churches will comply again. And you got to make sure you've got yourself a really good, solid uh, pastor who's going to fight for you, stand for you, teach you, pray for you, tell you the truth, and, and just be there for you through this time. Because, family, I don't know when the rapture is going to take place. It is going to take place. It is a biblical prophesied event. Um, I don't know how hard times will get leading us up to the rapture of the church and and then ultimately the world going into great tribulation. But I know one thing, uh, we're going to need leadership within the church that's going to protect the flock. And that's going to be very, very important. So please, don't look for the flashy church that has the nice facilities and all of that. If it has that and you got a solid Bible preaching pastor who's preaching more than just this wishy-washy stuff that comes from the pulpit today, then that's great. Then you have the best of all worlds. But don't sacrifice solid biblical preaching and teaching for charades and for fog machines and light shows and nice facilities. Because ultimately, family, that is not going to carry you through these hard times. You need a good church that's got good Bible preaching sacrificial leadership that's spending time in prayer and is committed to protecting God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. I just felt to say that. Now, now the Lord is coming back. And why that's why I said all that is for this too. The Lord is coming back for a glorious church. Now, if you have your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 5. We know the church must be glorious. Because Ephesians chapter 5 tells us how, what the Lord is going to present unto himself. And Ephesians chapter 5, in the context of marriage and the responsibility of a husband, the Bible says this, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. So it goes back that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. I hear a lot of preaching today. They don't even open up their Bibles. If your pastor doesn't open up your Bible, then get yourself a new pastor. I'm just being real. If your pastor opens up just one little verse and just expounds on it with secular mentality and thoughts, then that's not Bible preaching and teaching, folks. Solid biblical preaching is precept upon precept and the people bringing the people through the scriptures. Now that he might present himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Why? Because the word of God has been given to that church and the church has been cleansed and washed by the preaching and the ministering and the teaching of the word. And it has been a holy church through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the power of the spoken word. Amen. So, Ephesians 5, 26 says he's coming back for a glorious church. Now, uh, the he's coming to rapture, and I'm going to teach a little bit on the rapture tonight if we have time, but that's the church that's going to be raptured up, is this glorious church, because, he, because it has to be. That's the church he's going to present in heaven as the bride. That's the church he's going to present before the Father. And uh, that's the church that he said he would present unto himself. And that's the church that has lived sacrificially dedicated to the Lord and to the word of truth. Amen. Somebody say, praise God. And, uh, and that's the church he's coming for. So when the rapture takes place, there's going to be church folks left behind, church-going people. There's going to be whole churches. There may be whole denominations left behind because they were not the people who are the glorious people who have allowed themselves to go through such a process as is outlined in Ephesians chapter 5. And you say, Pastor, do you have even more Bible on this? I do. For time, we won't go there, but in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, the Lord said he was going to keep the Philadelphia church from the hour of temptation that's going to come on to test the people of this earth, which is, I believe, the tribulation period, And he's going to keep the Philadelphia church, which was so faithful and committed to God in every way, he was going to keep them from the tribulation period, which means that he was going to take them out from it. And so I still believe in a pre-trib rapture. 
uh, and being so sold out and dedicated to Christ now, not waiting, oh, the tribulation started, I better start serving the Lord. No, you've got to serve God right now. You've got to live in the imminent return of Jesus and be the glorious church. And that's what's been resounding in my spirit all day. Be the glorious church. Pray for your people to be the glorious church. Teach the people, preach to the people, prepare the people uh, for the return of Jesus Christ. Pastor Ralph did a great job on Sunday telling people to be rapture ready and, uh, and be careful what we listen to today. Praise God. The word glorious means this. It means triumphant, worthy of honor and admiration. So that's what Jesus said. He's going to present to himself a church that is triumphant and a church that is worthy of honor and admiration, a triumphant church. Also, it means this, to having to be having uh, striking beauty and delight. Praise God. It has it is, it is got a beauty to it. So Jesus said he's going to present the church to the Father in heaven. And our name is going to be called out in heaven to the Father. And that church is going to be a triumphant church, not a defeated church, not a weak church. And this was in my spirit all today, and I was praying. Not a defeated church, not a weak church, not a woke church, not a compliant church to the things of this world, not a church that surrenders to evil and to the control of wickedness, not a church that is sinful and ungodly, not a church that's carnal and worldly, a church that has def- stood strong, as the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and the fact that they love not life even unto death. A triumphant church. Hallelujah. A church that will not, will never succumb or surrender to darkness or to evil or to ungodliness. That church is the church he's going to present to the Father in heaven. And uh, it's worthy of honor. So, uh, so he's coming back to a church that's worthy of honor. If we're worldly, if we're just like the world, then we're not worthy of honor. If we're living just like the world, then we're not worthy of honor. If we succumb and, 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 and surrender ourselves to the control of, of ungodly people, then we're not worthy of a, to be a church of honor. If we allow unrighteousness to rule and live in the church, then we're not a church worthy of honor. That church worthy of honor, as Jesus put it to I believe the Holy Spirit, Jesus giving it to the Holy Spirit who gave it to Paul, uh, because the Holy Spirit was going to reveal to us all things that the Lord has spoken, uh, it says, says this, he should be holy and without blemish. Praise God. Amen. And, uh, and let me just say this to you. We honor certain people in society, don't we? And that's what this is about. It's about a church of honor a church of, that's beautiful, a church that is holy, a church that is righteous, a church that's not only a church that's not only believed in the blood and the power of the cross and the resurrection and allow itself to be washed in that blood, but a church who is living according to the word of God. Here's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Sorry. Here's, here's some ideas of honor. Honor we give honor to certain people. A, a man gives honor to his bride, which the church is the bride of Christ. A man gives honor to his bride because of her beauty and because of her heart. Praise God. She's got a good heart. She's got, she is, she carries a weightiness of beauty that, that, the, 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 that the husband so loves and is so infected by that he presents her with great honor before people. That's the bride of Christ. Amen. We give honor to uh, we give honor to different people of society. Also, we give uh, we give honor to sports athletes and to because of what? Because of their training, because of their talents, because of their abilities, and because of their victories. We give honor to them, and that's the church. The Lord will give honor. He's presenting a church, honorable church, and given honor to that church because of its many victories, because it destroyed the works of darkness, 
because it overcome this world, because it overcome the wickedness and the temptations and the sins of this world, and it overcome the works of, of the devil. Praise God. We give honor to we give honor to war vets because they went into the battle and because of their bravery and because of their sacrifice, many laying down their lives for freedom and for others. And Jesus said, there's no greater love than this than a man that lays down his life for his friends. A soldier is that type of person. We give honor to them because they triumphed over their enemies and because of their sacrifice and because they were willing to go into the battle. That's the church that God is coming for. That's the church that Jesus is coming for in the rapture. They don't give in. They're in the fight. They're in the battle. And they're fighting for the souls of people. And they're fighting for for people to come to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And they're protecting the body of Christ. Uh, very, very important. That's the church that Jesus is coming for, the glorious church. We give honor to teachers and educators because of their wisdom and because of their understanding. The Lord is coming for a glorious church, a church of understanding, a church of wisdom. Uh, a church that understands what the mind of God is and understand what the will of God is and understands what the manifold wisdom of God is and and not only understands it, but makes no apology for it and yields themselves and submits themselves under the authority of that understanding and wisdom from God. That's the church that the Lord's coming for. We give honor to first responders, to firemen, to 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 uh to the policemen and to uh, different men and women who uh who put their life on the line every day to protect us uh we give honor to them because of their because of their sacrifice um and that's the church that's the church he's coming for praise god they put their they're willing to put their life on the line for for the kingdom you know, folks, we either believe this or we don't. We either go in all the way or we or we don't. There's no half-heartedness in the kingdom of God. And this is a time to really, really, uh, really evaluate our walk with the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to help us to evaluate that walk as the people of God. We give honor to our parents, as the Bible commands us to, because of their love, because of their sacrifice because of their covering and their protection of, of us, of our parents. We give honor to them. The church's job is to protect the body of Christ, but the church's job is also to reach out to protect people. Praise God. We give honor to pastors. We give honor to pastors because of their daily com unrelent unrelenting commitment to the things of God. That's the church he's coming for. He's not coming for people who play church. He's not coming for people who, as Pastor Ralph so wonderfully put it, have no oil in their lamps. They have, they have, uh, they are, they look like the church. They look like they've got it all together, but they are empty inside. There is no fire for God. There's no passion. There's no commitment. There's no sacrifice. There's no dedication. There's no, there's no surrender. It is, uh, you know, they go to church because, yes, it's community and it's relationship, it's friendship, but it's beyond, there's nothing beyond that. They're not willing to give up anything for Jesus. You know, he's coming for a glorious church family. Praise God. And the question is, are you a part of the glorious church? That's a great question tonight. Are you a part of the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Because that's the way the many in the early church did. That's the way many had to live during the Great Reformation. And that's the church that Jesus is returning for. The Philadelphia church. Praise God. Whose heart was truly surrendered to God. You know, somebody asked uh, Pastor Parsley years ago: "Is the Lord is the is 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 there is there are there going to be uh, Christians or church people going through the Great Tribulation?" He said, "Yes, there will. They'll be the ones who are not sold out for Jesus. They're lukewarm. 
they're really not fully committed to Christ. They go to church. They're not born again. Um, they'll be left behind. Uh, you know, Pastor Ralph said so clearly through the scripture on Sunday that, you know, 50%, according to Jesus, will not be the glorious church that's raptured. Because, again, they they look like brides. They're dressed like brides. They have lamps like a bride, but there's no oil in the lamp. Their heart is not filled with the word of God and the spirit of God. And so, family, this is a very important time in all human history. I like what Cliff said. I am. I know you are, Cliff. We've spent time together. Praise God. And uh, and I, I we need this kind of challenging word to be preached from our pulpits. A lot of what's preached in our, from our pulpits, family, today, as I do, I listen to them, has no depth. And uh, not all churches. There's some great, awesome pastors preaching out there. But uh, a lot of it's just me, it's meaningless in the grand scheme of eternity. And it's meaningless in this moment of time as we are living in in a dire time uh, as we're witnessing what's going on in the world today. So the, there is going to be a rapture of the glorious church. And, uh, and we, we want to be on fire. I, can I challenge my church tonight? Can I challenge you tonight? Um, and, uh, and it's, and at times very, 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 uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to be as 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 wise as I possibly can and season this with his love as much as I can. Very concerning for me sometimes as a pastor when I don't see the commitment that's truly needed in believers. Number one is uh, Sunday morning, people strolling into church late. You know, like it's something I have to do. We should be early to church we should be so early to church that we're at pre-service prayer. Prayer is a real indication of where people's heart is in, in the body of Christ. The, you know, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me today, one of, the, one of the most important parts of the gathering of the saints is when they pray together. And that's the truth. And pre-service prayer should be one of the most packed parts of the service. Should be packed. Should be packed with Christians at the altar. Christians in the in in the seats, Christians coming together, Christians praying together. Pre-service prayer should have as much people in it as the as the as the as the conclusion of, of a service. Pre-service prayer. We have pre-service prayer at Kingdom Worship Center at at ten fifteen, where people come down in the sanctuary to pray. And uh, I want to challenge you to be there, family. Because you say, why is that important? Because Jesus told the disciples to watch and pray in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was about to suffer for all of humanity. And the Bible warns us to watch and pray, especially in the context of the coming of the Lord. So I want to encourage you, make these sacrifices. We don't know how much more time we have on this earth, either whether time runs out, or whether or not the Lord is coming. So let's make every moment count. Be at pre-service prayer. Don't come strolling in at 1030. Be there at 10. Be there at 1005. And let us pray. And we're turning our sanctuary into a time of prayer, not controlled, allowing the Holy Spirit just to move and people to seek the face of God and to pray and to, and to be prepared for what God would do in that service, but also to keep us strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. I see some amens on there. And I like that. Curtis says, a family that prays together stays together. Amen. Now, there, the Lord is coming for the glorious church, and I think we've laid that out tonight. If you have your Bible, uh, some people have said, is there going to be a rapture? Yes, there is going to be a rapture. There's major scripture. Now, the word rapture is not in your Bible, but... It's it's it, you know repturo where we get uh, we get uh, or harpazo uh, is another word where we get uh, where we get the word rapture from is simply the word means to be caught up and to be caught up to be with the Lord and it's a major portion of Scripture. Uh, I wanted to teach again on the glorious church because I don't want anybody to think well I'm going if you're not going people aren't going if they're not living for the Lord. 
It's just just the reality of it according to scripture, according to the to the ten versions, five wise and five foolish. The parable. But first Thessalonians chapter four, first Thessalonians chapter four, praise God. It is one of the major portions of Scripture, if not the major portion of Scripture, that Paul got the revelation of, that Peter also alludes back to the teachings of Paul. And I want you to know that the rapture of the church did not have any, it could happen at any time. It, 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 could, it could have already transpired, it didn't, and the Lord has not come for whatever reason he has chosen into his own will and purposes. But the rapture could have happened any time. Uh, it is a timeless event, meaning it does, it's set by God, but the Bible didn't really give us prophetic indication of when it could happen. And that's because every generation had believed that the Lord was coming in their time, and that was for the purpose of the Lord keeping people in a place to be prepared, watching and praying and on fire for him. You know, you know these people that say that, you know, it's a set time during the middle of the tribulation or the ends of the tribulation, I don't, I don't see that in Scripture. And uh, many say, well, Paul didn't believe in the rapture. Yes, he did. He believed that he was going to be caught up in his generation. I'm going to prove that in a second. Peter also said, seeing, seeing that it was coming, that we should, what manner of, of life we should live. And that was that we are to live righteously before the Lord, knowing that he is coming soon. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 says this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That's those who have passed away. The Bible says, to them that are, that are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. My father recently passed away. I miss him. It, it, it was a painful time to watch our family hurting over this as, 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 as not just a pastor, but just as a dad and a son. But we know that our dad, my dad's in heaven. I know. I've, I always had the wonderful privilege of being his son, but being his pastor, too. And we have hope. All of us have hope for our loved ones who have passed on who are in Christ. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which Sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. He's not, this is not his opinion. This is not the Apostle Paul's uh, own, tr own translation and thoughts. He says, he says it. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. In other places, Paul has said this with, that it was his opinion to the Corinthian church, but here he's saying God gave him this revelation that we which are alive, that we, that word we means is very key. You can't just read your Bible. You have to read your Bible. We, he is lumping himself into we which are alive and remain, which Paul believed that he could be going in the rapture of the church, or the catching of a way, the catch, to be caught away. He believed it. And because he believed it, he not only ch challenged himself, he said he beat, beat himself into submission. <laughs> he, you know, he was like a runner pushing himself so that he would not be disqualified. But he also encouraged his followers, those who followed him as he followed Christ, and those that he was a a minister over to live for the Lord as the Lord was coming in their time. Hallelujah. Amen. For we which are alive and remain. So obviously if he's saying that, he believed in the imminent return of our Lord and Savior for his glorious church, as we taught a second ago. Praise God. Peter believed the same way. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself sh shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. There'll be an announcement by the archangel. Praise God. 
There'll be a shout from heaven because the Lord is coming for the glorious church. And there'll be a trump of God blasting as he comes for his bride. Hallelujah. Amen. So many believe, and I think very much this is preparation. The devil is trying to prepare the world to deceive it. And same with governments and saying that there's aliens coming and that when the church is gone that we were taken by aliens we're not going to be taken by aliens we're going to we're going to be taken by the king of kings and the lord of lords and we're going to be redeemed from this earth praise god and the bible says with the voice of the archangel with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first well it's going to happen in two tenths of a sec second blinking of an eye which we'll read in a second it's going to happen very quickly then we which are alive and remain, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. That is that word caught up. That's where we get the word rapture from. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air. Some people believe this is that at the end of the tribulation, the Lord will come for the church. Well, no, at the end of the tribulation, the Lord is going to come down to the earth, the Bible says. He's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. It's going to split in four places. He's going to walk down through the Kidron Valley. He's going to go up through the Eastern Gate. He's going to go into the temple, and he's going to sit there as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he's going to rule this world, hallelujah, and uh, for a thousand years. The Bible is very clear on that. And we see here that they, then we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds. Uh, to meet the Lord in the air, so shall ever we be with the Lord. We're gonna we're gonna go and meet Him up there in the clouds. Some people say that's the cloud of witnesses. It does yeah, but Paul just doesn't use the word clouds as being potentially, as the Hebrew says, we're surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. So yes, it could be with other people. We're meeting with other people, which we will, especially the dead in Christ. But he says in the air. So we're, we're going to be caught up off, off this earth. And the Bible says, and so shall ever, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort another with these words. Powerful portion of scripture. Hallelujah. This is the rapture, not of the, we got to, we really got to be clear again, not just of a church or the church, but of the glorious church. Hallelujah. There was Church of Ephesus, Church of Pergamos, the Church of Thyatira, the Church of Laodicea, the, many of those churches the Lord, the Lord had to deal with because of their ungodliness. But the Church of Philadelphia, the faithful, glorious church, he promised them protection with a, with, from the great tribulation that's coming on the earth. Praise God. Now, Paul believed in the imminent return. Many of your great... Bible preachers down through the ages and reformers down through the ages believed in the imminent return of Jesus. And I believe in the imminent term of Jesus, return of Jesus. He could come at any moment, at any time. Hallelujah. The tribulation is a set time. We know that the tribulation, which I'm going to teach in weeks to come, cannot start until the Antichrist signs an agreement with Israel. That is set. It's a prophetic word. We know that the moment that, now we'll be in heaven, I believe, at that time, but the moment that the Antichrist signs an agreement with Israel, it sets the course of the last week of Daniel's 70 weeks, which is seven years of tribulation on the earth. We know that, we know that that's a set time. And we know when it's going to start according to scriptures and how it's going to start. But the rapture could happen tonight. And even so, come soon, Lord Jesus. I would be very cautious, and I like to, I like to challenge pastors, as you know, and I like to warn the saints. I I would be very cautious with 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 preachers and teachers that say things like I don't want the rapture to come yet because I want to hang out with family, I want to do more ministry, I I I want to continue to live some more of this life. There's that should never come, not just from the pulpit not just from a pastor. It should never come from a Christian. And I, I can prove that scripturally too. Nothing should be more desirable for us 
than for the coming of Jesus. And we want him to come. And we're looking for his coming. And we're watching for his coming as the Bible commands us. Nothing should be more valuable to us than us to be with Jesus and to be and to him to be with us. Praise God. No person should be greater in our lives. As much as I love my children and I love them and I know all you love your children, as much as I love my wife and my family, I love Jesus more than all of them. Praise God. And I want them to love Jesus more than me. And I want the Lord to come. And you should want the Lord to come. And how do you say, Pastor, how do you how's that script? Because Revelation chapter 22, 20, and 21, the last two verses of your Bible, declares for the Lord to come quickly and that the grace of God be with us all. Praise God. But John concludes the Bible with the great desire for the Lord to come and to come quickly. That should be the heart of every believer. Praise God. Paul said it this way. He says, I desire to go to heaven to be with Jesus. But for your sakes, it is more expedient that I stay here. His heart was to be with Jesus. But he knew God's will was that he would remain on the earth for the people to teach them. Praise God. Nothing is more valuable, dear saints, glorious church of the Lamb of God, than the coming of the Lord and to be with Jesus and to and, and, to, and to be a part of the glorious church. It's more important than money. It's more important than fame. It's more important than identity. It's more important than success and all of that stuff that's preached in our pulpits today. Nothing is more valuable to you than your relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing should excite you more than the coming of the Lamb of God. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Because when that is your heart... It will preserve you and protect you. This is good teaching tonight. What time is it? Oh, I, I got a little bit of more time here. It'll, it'll protect you. It'll help keep you straight. It'll keep your priorities straight. It'll keep your desires straight. Everything that you will do be, will be in the context of pleasing the Lord, in the context of doing those things that are right before the Lord because you want to honor him in his coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. I'm, I'm telling you right now, family, I've been, I'm blessed. I have been blessed. Uh, I, I, I have so much to give God thanks for, but there's nothing in my life right now that I want more than anything else than the coming of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember years ago, the Lord said, you should want me more than even you want souls. That's what he told me. Nothing is nothing is first in my life. I want people to be saved, but I want Jesus in my life more than anything else. Hallelujah. And I want that relationship with him, and you should want that. And if, if, if you got it, build on that. Nothing is more valuable than Jesus. You know, God had challenged others in the past that they were spending more time with people than with, they were with him. And uh, it's important that we spend more time with him and want him more than anything else in our lives. Praise God. That's the heart of the glorious church. That's the heart of the five wise virgins who were looking for the bridegroom to come, who were prepared for his coming, who had completed everything that they needed to do in preparation for the bridegroom to come. Hallelujah. That should be our heart. Because the rapture is going to take place. It is a prophesied, biblical, futuristic event that Paul said was not his opinion, but it was the word of the Lord. Praise God. Let me give you another scripture. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Cor I love teaching on the end times. It's one of my favorite Bible subjects. I've studied it for many years. First Corinthians chapter 15 uh, is a great portion of Scripture. Some of you know it, but we'll go there. And, uh, and I'm going to cl close with, with another Scripture. But First Corinthians chapter 15, 51. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 
1551. We read this at grave sites. Uh, many, let me see what some of you say. I haven't seen what some of you are saying tonight. Jesus is more important to me than life itself. You've got it, honey. That's it, Aim, right there. He is your life. He is your life. Praise God. First, first Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says in verse 51, uh, it says this, but I am telling you this strange and wonderful secret. I'm going to read it from the King James, actually. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We will not all die. That's what he's saying. We are not all going to die. Yes, it is appointed a man to die, uh, you know, that die once and then the judgment. But there are people who will miss death because the coming of the Lord. Praise God. There's an appointment of death, but we got, some of us are going to bypass that because of the rapture of the church and the coming of the Lord. Because he says, he says, behold, I show you a mystery. I don't have all the understanding, he says, on this. It's a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's where I got that two-tenths of a second. At the last trump, the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. There's that trumpet blast, the same thing, First Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. There he is saying we again, because he believed that he was going to be alive at this event. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. There is the rapture of the church. It's the same context, different wording, but same context as 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, family. So the rapture of the church is biblical. I will get into maybe teaching next week a little bit on uh, on why we believe in a pre-trib rap, not just because somebody told me to believe it, but because the Bible actually teaches it. I believe it is the the, it, it, there is way more biblical foundation for a pre-tribulation rapture than anything else, than the other, uh, than the other ideas or the other uh, theories. Okay? Now, let's go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. The rapture. I, I don't, please put up there. Please put there tonight because people read your comments. Put up there on, on, on the thing, the rapture of the glorious church. Please put that up there. The rapture of the glorious church. Because I don't, I don't want people to be misled. Just because you're in the church doesn't mean you're going. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're going. Maybe that's the proper way of saying it. Uh, you know, there's people that go to church, they don't believe that the word of God is infallible. They don't let the Holy Spirit do nothing with them. There's no commitment in them. They're as worldly as the world. Um, there's not a true conversion of their heart. I'm not talking about people that make mistakes because we all de- done that. I've been there myself. I'm talking about there, there's just no conversion in their heart, no desire for Jesus, no desire for the things of God, no desire for change, um, no hungering for, for righteousness. Uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, and I'm going to close with this. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 20. I hope you're enjoying it tonight. The rapture of the glorious church, the rapture of the glory. 27 years old, I was told I would not be here. But Jesus is the reason I am here. Amen to that. He is the reason why you're here. He's wonderful, isn't he? Praise God. The rapture of the glorious church. And please share this tonight. And maybe you'll put on your Facebook page pointing people back to this teaching tonight. Because this is an important teaching, family. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, 17, verse 20. Luke's Gospel, 17, verse 20. The Bible says this. And when he, uh, praise God, and when he had demand, uh, demanded of the Pharisees, and when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them, said, The kingdom of God cometh not in observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom is within you. The kingdom of God is in us. So the kingdom of God is not a nation like the nations of the world. It lives with inside of his glorious church. 
And the Bible says, and he sent the disciples the days, then he spoke to his disciples. And he says, the days will come when you will desire to, when you shall desire to see one of the, the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And, and they shall say to you, see here or see there, go after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part of under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in that day. One version says, as lightning comes from the east to the west, so shall the Son of Man. It's going to be a flash, the coming of the Lord, a flash. What the Bible say? The twinkling of an eye. It's going to happen quickly. Praise God. But first, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. That's the cross. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. That's what he prophesied in Matthew 24, too. They did eat and they, they drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. They're going to be caught off guard. People are just going about living their life like nothing's going to happen, but it is. It's happening. There's church people that'll do that too. They'll, they're just living their lives. They don't, there's many people that don't believe anything that's going on has no connection to Bible prophecy and uh, just living their lives and going to be caught off guard. The Bible says, Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, and they sold, and they planted, and they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. That's the great tribulation going to come on this earth so quickly, and people are going to be unaware of it because they don't understand the manifold wisdom of God or the scriptures, or they have rejected it. The Bible says, even thus shall it be in the in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he said, shall be, shall be upon the housetop and his staff in the house. Let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remembers Lot's wife. Whos, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Whoever surrenders their life to Christ shall preserve it. I tell you that in that night there shall be two men in one bed. That word men is an added word. Many believe it means two people is the right translation. Uh, in the King James used men, it's italics because it wasn't in the original scripture. It, it, one version says a husband and a wife. I tell you in that night there shall be two in one bed, and the one shall be taken and the other one shall be left. Bam, gone. That's the Bible. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other one left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other one left. Family, the rapture is in the Bible. And the rapture is, the, the teaching of the rapture is clear. There are going to be people who are left on this earth and there's going to be others who are going to be taken from this earth. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when that archangel speaks and that shout from heaven, that trumpet blast, hallelujah, there's going to be those who are gone and those who are going to remain. And those that remain are going to go through the tribulation period. And the Bible is very clear. It says this, and they and he said, two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other one left. If you notice what he says here, it's going to be in the night. It's going to be in the morning and it's going to be in the day, which means that it is a global event because these are, these are, it's it he says in the night in the bed in the morning grinding in the afternoon so this is a global event every time zone is going to experience the rapture of the church praise god it's a global event the bible says and they answered and said unto him where, where lord and he said unto them where wheresoever the body is hither will the eagles be gathered together praise god and he's talk here we go but there's judgment coming to the earth. Praise God. And some believe this is this this scripture is talking about judgment. I believe it's talking about both. I believe it's talking about one will be gone, one will be taken, and the other one will be left. Some people believe it's one taken in judgment and the other one not. I believe it's both. Praise God. Noah, somebody put it up here on, on the thing. Noah 
Remember this, Noah was taken from judgment and the others left. It's the same thing. Lot was taken out of judgment and the other ones left to be judged. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's taking people out of judgment and the other ones shall be left to go through it. And I believe the glorious church, the glorious church is going to be raptured. And I believe it's going to be soon. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I, I, I would love to keep going tonight, but we have taught here for just about an hour, and I think we've given you a lot of information to digest tonight, and a lot of scripture. And I hope you enjoyed the teaching tonight of the rapture of the glorious church. Please, please, family, share this. Please get it out there. Uh, and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit helps us to reach as many people as we can in the church. Praise God. And those that are unsaved, please get this out here. And I can just all you got to do is share, family. It's all you have to do. It's very easy. Or maybe write something on your Facebook page. Go to Dr. Peter Marshall's page and take a look at the teaching tonight on the glorious raptured church. Hallelujah. Um, let, let me say this to you, family. And let me say this to you that are watching. This is an important time. And you still have time. You have, you have still time. We don't know how much time, but you still have time. The Lord could come before I finish what I'm about to say, but I'm going I'm going to do it. You still have time right now that if you're backslidden, come back to the Lord. If you're not living right, you still have time to repent. Praise God. If you're not living for God and there's secret sins in your life, then you have time to turn from them. Repent of them. Run from them. Walk away from it. Get your life right with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Spend some time. Ask the Lord to forgive you. First John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You still have time. You haven't died. You haven't died. And you're still alive. And the Lord hasn't come. So you have time. And you ought to thank God that you still have that time. So give. Number one is, if you're a Christian who's not living for God like you should, then repent and live for Christ. And ask him to forgive you. Turn from it and turn unto righteousness. Hallelujah. If you're backslidden, come back to Jesus now. Not tomorrow, not next week, because that may not be there. Come back to Jesus Christ now. Return to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your wayward ways. And return to Jesus now. Do it now. Do it now. Praise God. And if you're not saved, You've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You don't, you've never been born again. As Jesus said, that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God in John chapter 3. If you've never believed in the power of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, if you have never asked the Lord to forgive you of your sin, if you have never confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and believe in him, do it now. Do it right now. Give your life to the Lord. He's coming. It's coming. Praise God. He's coming soon. We're watching Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes on a daily basis now. The great tribulation is about to come on this earth, family. And uh, and the, the, the Antichrist kingdom is, is here. He just hasn't been revealed yet. It's here. The beast is here. His kingdom. The spirit of it all is here. And it's it's happening before our very eyes. So give your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do it now. All you have to do is say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I have failed you. I have sinned against you. I have rebelled against you, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died on a cross. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe, Jesus, that you are at the right hand of the Father. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Save me, Jesus. Give me eternal life. I repent of my sinful ways. I turn my life to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give my life to you, Jesus. 
Or how about this too? I return to you, Jesus. Forgive me for walking away. Forgive me from turning from you. I'm coming back, Lord, to you. Praise God. Or how about this, dear saint of God? Lord, I haven't been living like I should. There is secret sin in my life. I'm asking you to forgive me. I repent of it. I I renounce it. I turn from it. I will live for you, Jesus. I will live for you. I believe in you, Lord. Please do that tonight, wherever you're at in your walk with God. Be counted as the glorious church without spot or without wrinkle. He's coming for the faithful church. And it's going to happen because the Bible prophesied it. I hope you enjoyed the teaching tonight, family. Once again, please share this. Please share this. Get this out. I love you so much. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support in every way. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at Kingdom Worship Center uh, at 92 Glancaster Road in Hamilton, Ontario. Our services are at 11 a.m. Our pre-service is at 10.15 a.m. Come join us. We're a Bible-preaching, Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled people who love God and love each other. Please, if you're looking for home church, come, come check us out. Also, family, I'll be announcing some good news. We've basically firmed up a property, uh, that, uh, and I'm going to talk more about that on Sunday. So we're super. God is doing some great things. God is doing great things. Praise God. If the Lord should tarry, we'll get in there. Amen. Well, have a fantastic night. I went a little longer tonight, but thank you for being patient. And thank you for hearing the teaching tonight. Next week, I'm going to teach you about the, the rapture and the tribulation in its relation to each other. We're going to bring you through the scriptures. You're going to love it. Amen. October, we're starting our teaching on the end times to get people fired up for the coming of the Lord and to get people out there reaching the lost. God bless you, family. I love you. Have a fantastic rest of your night and weekend. Amen.